check, check. Mic check, one, two. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to the Monterey Policy Forum, October 2022. My name is Robert Wagonza, the Master of Ceremonies this morning. I kindly request some of us who could be still standing to take up our seats so that we get started formally. As you are aware, this forum is coming in Hardly a day when the deputy governor read the monetary policy statement. So therefore, it gives us an opportunity to discuss critical issues concerning the monetary policy, but also get feedback from you on some of the issues that you do need uh, to get more information about but also see how we can continue to work together to make sure that this economy is good for all of us. Before you on the tables, you have an information pack, and that information pack has so many things, but one of them is the program. And as far as the program is concerned, this is actually the shortest program I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> There are three key things. The first one is the opening remarks um, by Mr. Andrew Elwana, the Acting Director, Communications at Bank of Uganda. The second key item on that program is a presentation by Dr. Charles Abuka, the Executive Director of Operations at the Bank of Uganda. And the last item on that program is the question and answer session. Of course, as I'm assuming that by now many of us have uh, taken breakfast, but in case you haven't, uh, we agreed to have a working breakfast, so uh, you'll feel free later on to move out and take breakfast. So in the meantime, just make sure that uh, you get to know the person sitting next to you, Okay, so that um, you, you, you leverage from this forum to enhance your networks. So without much ado, please allow me to take this opportunity to invite Mr. Andrew Elwana, the Acting Director of Communications at the Bank of, Ugam Bank of Uganda, to come and deliver the opening remarks. You are welcome, Andrew. the Acting Executive Director Operations, Mr. Solomon Kavuma, uh, distinguished participants, the treasurers of supervised financial institutions, and our trust fund managers, staff of Bank of Uganda, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good morning to you all. It is with great pleasure that I welcome you all to this Monetary Policy Forum where we engage with treasurers or supervised financial institutions and fund managers in the financial sector. Allow me to start by informing you that the Bank of Uganda's mission was modified to read as follows. To promote price stability and a sound financial system in support of social economic transformation in Uganda. Ladies and gentlemen, our new mission makes it clear that our decisions and actions as a central bank should ultimately contribute to improve the well being of our nationals. For this to happen, we must make 
conscious efforts to engage as many stakeholders as possible through effective communication. The first monetary policy forum, which was held in February this year, focused on engaging members of the fourth estate, that's the media, with a view of improving their understanding so as to enhance their reporting on issues related to monetary policy and the economy at large. This forum, the second monetary policy forum, targets to engage with the implementing partners, the key stakeholders with whom monetary policy can effectively be transmitted. As key participants in the financial markets, your participation, understanding, response to the Bank of Uganda decisions is critical if monetary policy is to yield the desired results within the economy. Effective monetary policy implementation and transmission is hinged on transparent communication of the central bank actions and therefore better public understanding and confidence in the central bank's decisions. As the treasurers of financial institutions and fund managers in the sector, you are key in determining the cost of money through the interbank lending rates and also participation and enabling a robust government securities market. The immediate aspect of monetary policy transmission is how financial institutions respond to central bank actions. Therefore, any quest to improve the effectiveness of monetary policy implementation should start with you. And this is the main objective of our engagement today. Success of monetary policy implementation is achieved through building public trust and confidence in our actions, the central bank's actions, of course. And the question still remains, how do we build trust in the central bank's decisions and actions? One most obvious answer was, is to have a competent team to conduct monetary policy decisions, which team we already have. The other very critical aspect is to nurture transparency in all central bank communications. Martin Fieldstein, a former United States Chairman of the Council of Economic Affairs, emphasized this phenomenon of trust when he said, in quotes, so just as I want pilots on the plane that I fly, when it comes to monetary policy, I want to think that there is someone with sound judgment at the controls. As a central bank, we believe that if we understand trust and follow the direction of our monetary policy actions, this will lead to effective implementation of monetary policy, as well as improve the performance of the financial sector and the economy at large. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I now take the profound pleasure of inviting the Executive Director Operations to address you all and make his presentation. I wish you all a fruitful deliberation. Thank you. Good morning to you all.
morning, our chief guest, and welcome to this forum. My name is Solomon Kavma. I'm representing the Executive Director of Operations, who has not been able to be with us this morning because of unscheduled commitments that came in at the time when he's required to be there. I'm glad to be here to speak to you today, not in my usual capacity when I meet you as treasurers, but this time under a more organized presentation forum, addressing the issues of monetary policy interaction, an issue that we should have started much earlier. And in this regard, I'm so grateful to Director of Communication and team for having initiated this and Bank of Uganda. It's the way forward on how central banks carry and insight monetary policy to its clients. I'm here with you to share the conduct of implementation of the monetary policy. Okay. Okay. And its interaction with monetary policy. The relationship between monetary policy and money market specifically focusing on interest rates and their relationship and its predictability. While in normal times, this may be accorded less attention, it does not take away the fact that money market players like you, the commercial bank, treasurers, play a critical role in signaling the stance of monetary policy in transmitting monetary policy decisions to the financial market, and more generally to the private sector and savings decisions. Therefore, today I seek to cast some highlight on these issues of monetary policy operations and your role in the transmission process. Can, can I ask much to help me roll? Okay, that's okay, that's okay. So in July 2011, Bank of Uganda adopted the inflation targeting flight framework to replace the targeting of monetary aggregates. This was motivated by the fact that demand for money is usually very unstable and very unpredictable. Hence, the control of reserve money would provide a weak form of controlling the aggregate demand and inflation. The second rationale as to why we adopted the IT was that because macroeconomic conditions quickly change in response to autonomous shifts in demand. Hence, it was necessary to adjust the monetary policy stance quickly to respond to the changing dynamics. Monetary aggregates targets do not provide a clear signal to the public about the stance of the monetary policy. So those three issues motivated the central bank to adopt the ITL because the aggregate money base was weak in controlling aggregate demand and inflation. Comparing what was, at that time, the monetary target and ITL, the primary objective of the base money was, of the monetary targeting framework was to control base money, which was considered to be the main determinant of inflation as opposed to the ITL framework, which focuses on price stability. The second difference was the second policy objective that the monetary targeting framework didn't usually have explicit objectives, while the ITL focuses on output and exchange rate. In terms of instruments, 
At the time when we were doing the monetary base, we were using the primary securities auction, the treasury bills at that time. The fiscal policy had not taken place, so we were using them. But with the use of the ITL, we started using the OMO operations, the repo, the reverse repos that we use to control liquidity in the system. The intermediate target in the monetary targeting framework was the broad money, while the ITL focuses on in inflation forecasting. And the frequency under the monetary base was usually annually after a year. But now we do it every after two months. Again, to reflect the changing dynamics in the macroeconomic environment. Communication at that time was very minimal. We rarely would go out to communicate. But now we regularly meet after the MPC meeting, just as it happened yesterday when the governor announced the monetary policy. The ITL framework employs the central bank CBR as the operating targeting of monetary policy. The CBR is intended to guide the short-term rates. Those are the seven days in the interbank interest market. This interbank rate is as well also expected to influence other interest rates in the economy. And those are the commercial banks, the depots, the commercial bank depots, and the lending rates. To achieve the above, Bank of Uganda, depending on the prevailing liquidity conditions, carries out market intervention and either withdraws or injects liquidity in the interbank money market using the OMO operations. The CBR is set and as well adjusted when necessary with a view about the likely future path of the economy, putting into consideration the future path of the output relative to the optimal as well as the exchange rate. So rather than focusing on achieving a target at that time, the approach emphasizes achieving the target over the medium term, typically over a year horizon. So the ITL ideally looks at the changing dynamics in the macroeconomic environment on a much more closer basis as opposed to the original monetary base targeting. So to steer the short-term interest rates as close as possible the CBR, MPC sets CBR once every two months and publicly announces to clearly signal the monetary policy stance. In financial markets department, we monitor the market on a daily basis and advise FMOS the action to take. FMOS decides on the use of the regular intervention in the money market to ensure that the seven-day interbank rate is as close as possible to the CBR. So the operations under the monetary policy here is that we as financial markets, we monitor the market, we look at the liquidity levels out there to determine the course of action that we advise FMOS to take the course of action. So monetary policy operations, therefore, we run a 14-day cycle and on the first day, usually our Thursday, Bank of Uganda opens the operations with a seven-day repo. And in between the days, we study using our market intelligence that we gather from you to understand the conditions of the liquidity stance in the market. When that happens, we meet every day to advise FMOS what the course of action to take. Usually, all the maturities of the OMO activities, the repo and the reverse repos that are done, mature on a Thursday. And why they mature on Thursday? Because that's the, the maturity date that the operating target was taken to carry on. So ideally, the operations there shows you what we do in the market between within the week 
how we monitor your liquidity stance, the conditions, the intelligence that you give us, and then we decide from there what course of action depending on the status of the liquidity in the market. The main instruments that we use for monetary policy are the repos, the reverse repos, mostly one to seven days, and they're used to manage and steer the interbank interest rates to the CBR. In addition, Bank of Uganda has the instruments, has the other instruments in the toolkit. We use the Bank of Uganda bill, which is 28, 56, 84, and 52 days, which you are all aware of, that we apply whenever we want to mop out liquidity from the market. We also use the standing gain facility, which recently has been high demand from you people, using it to provide for you the facility in the market. We also have the recapitalization of securities that also helps us to mop up liquidity from the market. Recently, the board, the policy approved the use of the FX swaps. However, this is still pending the enactment of the law. And I think with the swaps, we'll go a long way in improving the mopping of the liquidity in the system. The special deposit facility auction was proposed. It is still under consideration. And once approved, we also think it will be able to help us regulate the liquidity stock that you have out there. So until May 2012, Bank of Uganda auctioned fixed quantities of repos which were heavily oversubscribed. Allocation was on a pro rata basis, and so the players wanted to ensure that they would receive adequate allocation. Because of that pro rata basis, the players were bidding with very high amounts, which from our perspective saw no information in that, because it did not guide what the level of liquidity and your demands were. So bank decided to drop that approach and now started offering you unlimited amounts when we are carrying out OMO operations. The central bank sets the price but does not control the quantity of the liquidity at that time. The approaches that guide the OMO operations, we do the market development, we look at what's in there in the market, we look at the short-term liquidity forecast. We, you give us the intelligence on a daily basis. We prepare our short-term liquidity intelligence based on the liquidity that we expect will hit the market. And also we gather market intelligence from you, your demand and supply. And out of, out of that, we are able to get a picture to understand the liquidity stance in the market to enable us to take the second course of action, either to mop or to, or to give you liquidity. And that's why it is very, very important that you concentrate on giving us very good market intelligence because when you don't give us very good market intelligence, we are unable to understand how the market is, the status of the market, and therefore we might not be able to arrive at a good decision in the market. So we normally ask you to give us the market intelligence so that it beefs up our understanding and decision making in the market. The time of the monetary operations. Monetary operations usually at 8.30, we gather market intelligence from you, the players, and we prepare our proposals for FMOS. We go to FMOS to see, to deliberate on the issues that we have collected from you as participant as in the market. And during the meeting, we discuss the pros and cons of what is a existing in the market regarding the liquidity and the interest rates that you've traded. And out of that, if there is any action to be done, we announce it at 10 a.m. We split the announcement into two. First, we announce the BOU bills and sales at 12, 
And then later in the afternoon, we announced the repo or the reverse repo to be carried out on the day. For quite some time, this process has worked very well. And as you can see, the CBR, the seven day weighted average rate has been within the CBR band. And sorry, I. As you can see, the, the, the green line is the CBR, and the red line is the seven-day weighted average rate in the interbank market. So the framework has really worked very well, and we've been able to be within that band of the CBR, except in some rare situations where the rate was outside the band. And it is this kind of assessment that we look at and we try to bring it as close as possible to the CBR. But generally, over a long period of time, we've been able to achieve the stability of the interest rate in the market. So BOU uses the CBR as the benchmark rate to steer the seven-day interbank money market rate to exert a systematic influence on other rates in the economy in a forward-looking manner through the following channels. We can use through the interest rate channel, the credit aggregate, the asset price, and the exchange rate channel. The interest rate channel comes up as the dominant transmission mechanism of the monetary policy. For example, an expansionary monetary policy leads to a lowering of the cost of loanable funds, which in turn raises investment and consumption demand and eventually get reflected in aggregate output and demand. The credit channel running along with the interest rate channel also transmits monetary policy by affecting aggregate demand through availability of loanable funds. Changes in the interest rates also induce movements in asset prices to generate worth effects in terms of market valuation of financial assets and liabilities. And with respect to the exchange rate channel, changes in the interest rate channel, changes in the interest rate can as well affect the level of domestic currency exchange rate, either through appreciation or depreciation. This can in turn have an effect on the net export aggregate demand and output prices. So, It is through these interest rate channels that you as participants in the interbank market play a very big role in transmitting monetary policy. When the CBR is announced, you come to the central bank, you borrow money at CBR rate, you extend this money to the entire economy through those channels. And as a result, influence the level at which loanable funds, at which you lend money to other clients is affected. As you can see from the graph, this has been the transmission mechanism since July, January 15th to date. The central bank rate is in blue, and you can see how the rates have been following, mimicking the behavior of the central bank rate. 
The time deposit rate is very close to the CBR. The lending rates are slightly up, and those reflect the credit issues that are in the market. So you, 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 the, the, the impl implication here is that your actions when you borrow from us are reflected in the lending rates and other rates in the economy. The recent performance has shown that the seven-day interbank rate are closely related with the CBR, as you can see from the diagram. The CBR also has a close relationship with the averaging time deposit and lending rates. They are so close together, meaning that the monetary policy effectiveness has been well carried out in the economy. So your role as market, money market player in the monetary policy transmission is that you extend credit and mortgages, the real sector. In so doing, you impact on the interest cost that the client gets from you and thereby influence the transmission of monetary policy. Updating prices on all traded instruments to allow for price discovery. This also helps because you are the determinants. You are the people who determine the price. So the price that you reflect is embedded into what we do in the monetary policy. You develop the interbank through supply of funds to the market, and this eventually affects the market prices. You ensure market making among players to develop the market. It's your role. And this as well, your actions there impact on the operations of the monetary policy. You also provide reliable market information to Bank of Uganda that drives our action. The transmission of monetary policy is observed through the above actions, you as market players, that you undertake in the market. The challenges in the monetary policy transmission that we experience, the segmented banking sector. Hence, in some cases, liquidity forecasts differ from information on liquidity conditions received from the market participant. The decisions on open market operations tend to rely more on the latter. With the segmented market sector, there's a tendency for the big banks to isolate the small banks. And this is a very big challenge because it constrains monetary policy transmission. The credit line limits that you set between banks, making it hard for some banks to borrow at a favorable market rate, this also impacts on the delivery of monetary policy. Other challenges include the striking balance between controlling exchange rate volatility and taking action in the domestic market. There's also the issue of structural liquidity, where government spending and forex purchases that result into surplus liquidity. All these are challenges. When government spends a lot of money, the market is awash with liquidity. As central banks, we don't have control other than mopping it out. It affects the level of liquidity that you hold. And this, in a way, impacts, draws down the interest rates if we don't mop it out. We also have the shallow domestic financial markets. When the markets are shallow, the products that are played with in the market are limited. And therefore, this also constrains your operations and also constrains monetary policy because there's no space to play with in the market to allow efficient transmission of monetary policy. All the, the above challenges tend to distort monetary policy transmission. However, we have worked on certain solutions we have come up with certain solutions to help resolve some of these challenges like the front clear guarantee facility which you all have signed this guarantees the risk it covers the risk between your counterparties and now you'll be able to deal with the smaller banks in a much more efficient manner and therefore ease the monetary policy transmission. We've also introduced the sell buybacks and the FX swaps which are waiting, plus the horizontal repo. All these 
are going to help out is the flow of monetary operation. The recent policy actions that we recently adopted, we had to increase the CRR from 10% to 10% from 8%. And basically that was because of the inflation environment that we are going in. And more recently, CPR has been raised just yesterday to that. All those are meant to manage inflation in the environment. In conclusion, be oil determine its monetary process stance. BOU determines monetary process stance that will best serve the maintenance of price stability. This is made firm by the appropriate level of CBR announced. The bank makes an assessment of the current economic and market conditions from the perspective of interplay of supply and demand in the goods service and factor markets against future inflation path expectation. BOU cross-checks cross the medium to long-term perspective and the short to medium term indications in order to determine the path of inflation. Commercial bank actions in terms of product pricing play a vital role in this regard. We, as financial market department, are charged with the responsibility of implementing these decisions through a set of instruments and procedures. And the orderly functioning and your role in the money market is therefore of utmost importance. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Solomon Kavuma, for such a wonderful presentation. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are moving into an interactive session, the Q&A session. So for all of us who have questions, please, uh, you'll have the opportunity to raise up your hand and then ask your question. Uh, I want to see who is going first, okay? We can take a round of maybe three or four and then the team responds, and then we take another round. Uh, thanks, Mr. Kavuma. Um, uh, my question is on the, you'd mentioned there towards the end, the FIA, uh, the enactment of that law, which would activate uh, the horizontal repo and the FX swaps. Uh, what is the status of that, and how soon uh, will that be passed into law? Second question, okay. Uh, thank you, Solomon. I think as you've given in the presentation and also I believe uh, at the time when we move to, 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 to the framework, um, inflation uh, uh, using CBR was the main tool uh, for driving uh, monetary policy in the, the inflation targeting light framework. However, this year we've seen a deviation, and, and I'd heard a couple of times it was clear CRR would not be used um, as a tool for driving monetary policy. This year we saw a rise um, from 8 to 10 percent, which you've also indicated there. I just want to get from you, do you really believe CRR is, is a good tool um, for influencing um, or for monetary policy transmission? Because if the focus was really on CBR, then why has there been a deviation to also include CRR in this case? Yet CRR actually looks at everything, including even the FY deposits that we hold. So um, to some of us, it looks like an overkill, but probably I would like to hear from you. Thank you. Your name, please. Your name? Peter Ambawa from ABSA. Thank you, Peter. Okay, next person to ask a question. Okay, I think, Solomon, you can first respond to those, and then uh, before you can take another round Maybe of so questions. Just, also just uh, sorry, maybe... Okay, there's one more? Okay, sure. Um, uh, thanks, uh, Mr. Kavma. Maybe just to add to what uh, my colleague Peter said, in relation to the CRR, so if price stability is achieved, is there a likelihood that the dial can actually be turned down to based on where your projections are? Is that um, something that's possible? 
uh, again, sorry, uh, Benon Okwenje Centenary Bank, just to add to what these gentlemen have said, if you go to slide 12 in the presentation, uh, towards the end, you see that the interbank rates diverge from where the CBR is. And that is a direct response into the increase of CRR from 8% to 10%. So again, the question is, is how relevant now would that increase in CRR is CBR? Is it still a really a good indi indicator for the market? Thank you. Uh, Rita, there is one more person. Okay. Oh, we, we'll do another round maybe later. But in the meantime, uh, you can see some of the questions are leaning towards supervision. And we have Mr. Ainebion over there who will gladly respond to questions regarding our supervision. Thank you. Solomon. Thank you very much. The question. The first question was on the horizontal repo. I think the bill is with the parliamentary council right now. That's my understanding. Immaculate. Is it okay? Yeah, it's being worked on, and soon it will be released. And then the second one is CBR was the main tool for, and then we adopted the CRR. I think you all bear with me that the environment we are right now in is a very difficult environment. The issues that are affecting the economy are coming from outside. And this came at a time when government expenditure was also very heavy. And the call on the CRR was specifically to speak or send a message to monetary policy tightening, which in situations like this works well. Because as you notice, inflation everywhere is not only here, it's crippling high. And we had to find ways of managing the liquidity out there. That's one of the ways of managing inflation. So much as the CBR was not responding at that time, the bank found it necessary and thoughtful that the CRR was the alternative to that. And as you notice also in the exchange rate space, the runaway exchange rate was taking a very high speed. If you had not come in to manage the liquidity levels, we would not be where we are right now. That's the reason why the CRR was adopted, because of the circumstances are not the usual circumstances, and so we had to cling on the CRR as one way of tightening liquidity in the market. And as you can see also what um, my friend Benny raised, it's because of the, you know, the sparks of liquidity that keep injecting in every now and then. But we are committed to further do whatever it takes to ensure that we bring it back to the CBR. But right now, these are very difficult situation. Some of the factors are outside our control and that's the best the central bank could do. And I think everywhere, elsewhere, they have done the same thing. It's a very difficult environment, but that's the solution. Yep. Sir, we have a question. Thank you. My name is Charles Richard from EcoBank. Uh, mine is on uh, sustainability of raising uh, the CBR. We have, uh, Central Bank has been raising CBR since, I think, June, um, continuously upward. And I think it's a common question now being asked across the globe. How sustainable is this? Now, looking at Uganda, we have just come from a two-year lockdown, and uh, we're just recovering. Um, some of the farms actually need the liquidity that we the banks are to provide, and the fact that the cost of uh, credit is going to rise so fast, given uh, almost a, a monthly kind of uh, raise in CBR, how sustainable is this approach in managing inflation? Are we not raising our economy to almost a stagnation? Uh, hi, uh, Oscar, again from Standard Chartered. Uh, you'd mentioned one of the tools uh, that you have is the, obviously the interest rates, but also the FX 
Uh, we've noted the reserves have dropped quite, uh, quite a bit this year, about 360 million. Uh, do you have any concerns around uh, the ability of BOU to continue using those to manage uh, the currency? But also, if you could uh, comment on the level of our debt service uh, relative to those reserves each year. Thanks. Uh, thanks, everyone. Issa Mukasa, Finance Trust. Uh, mine is, is just to speak a little more into the the question around sustainability of the CBR. Um, I know that the way it works is, is by way of moderating aggregate demand. Now, uh, in my view, the, the demand is already very low. The fact that we are coming from the lockdown that he alluded to, um, and, and you already mentioned that the key drivers to the current inflation is um, rather are external to the country. I'm just wondering, um, Together with, with, with the, the issue of sustainability of the CBR in terms of moderating inflation, are we, are we figuring out probably other interventions that, that could come into play here? Because in my view, we risk uh, drifting into a recession because what is eventually going to happen is that supply is going to get more constrained when the money is not flowing. Uh, so how do we achieve a balance? And I know that's what monetary policy is about. How do we achieve a balance between are containing inflationary pressures without uh, triggering recession. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, sustainability of raising CBR when you are coming from a two-year lockdown. Yes, I agree with you. That's a very difficult situation we are right now in. But as you noticed, the recent inflation plinth was very was was high, which indicated that inflation was still playing up in the market. However, the bank is very cautious about that and you can see the response, the rate at which they increase their CBR is not so aggressive as other central banks are doing. So they are mindful of the fact that, yes, we are coming from the lockdown. But again, on another hand, it's something, you know, inflation has a lot of evil that if it runs into the economy, the destruction is going to be much greater than what we are seeing right now. So I think the bank has taken a position to say, yes, let's go in, manage the inflation. When you do manage the inflation, when it comes down, we'll devise other ways of, 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 of resuscitating the, the monetary policy. I think we are now dealing with two evils, but I think inflation is a very, worst, very, very bad evil, which we need to manage. And if you don't manage it, it's going to go in two a situation where it may be uncontrollable. That's why they are committed to continuously increase the rates, at least to manage the inflation. On the issue of reserves and debt service, I think by and large our reserves are still significant high. And we can adequately service our reserves very well. We've not had any problem with that. And we are also lucky that you, the players out there, know what you do in the exchange rate. When we see it going up and then going down and then going up and going down. We still have a fallback position. And the fallback position here is the offshores, the portfolio flows that come in and go are also, they also don't have anywhere to go. In the US, it's negative interest rates. I know they are here in the swap market. They are playing up in there. But, I mean, we've seen them in and out, in and out, in and out. And by and large, when you compare the level of the exchange rate with the regional, I think Uganda is doing very well when you compare with other countries within the region. So I think our monetary policy and the fact that we still have the portfolio flows coming in and out will sustain us. However, that doesn't mean that we cannot act 
where need arises. The bank has the potential and the reserves are still and we can act where it's necessary. We are only being prudent and cautious and understanding, but we can, when the situation calls for us to act, we will in the back end. Um, which other issue didn't I, did I, did I answer? You seem to have answered uh, the questions that have been asked so far. Uh, we're going to take another round of questions, but before that, we have uh, uh, people online, so uh, we encourage our online audience to send in their questions as well. We'll read them out here uh, verbatim, and then uh, um, please uh, feel free to send in your comments, send in your questions, so that uh, the team here can answer the questions. Mr. Inebiona says so far there are no prudential related matters, so everything seems to be rotating around monetary policy. And Solomon has done as well so far. He has answered the question. So we're going to take another set of questions. We have enough time for questions, actually. We committed an hour from 10 to 11 for Q and A. Whoever has a question, you'll certainly get an opportunity to ask. So let me take... Um, okay, Jonah, you want to... A comment, and then we'll go to... Huh? Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to just add a comment to what the director said. There is someone who said uh, that is this sustainable because we have increased the CBR so much since June and nothing seems to be coming through. Yeah, you could be right, but when we are, if you look at our statement, motor statement, what is the timeline for transmission? What is the period through which results can be expected? Medium term one year to two years, even more. And as you know, the economy, it's not, like I keep saying, it's like about the system. When you get treatment, you don't expect it in, in, within one day. So June is just a short time for us to start thinking we should be getting. But the, what we are intervening now is going to help us observe or achieve the results with, within as we, are, uh, as we go ahead. But also, the CPR is not only for moderation of demand, aggregate demand, like, you said it's just one way. But have we examined the impact it's having on the external side? For example, where is inflation coming from? You have said very well there are supply side factors. If we allow it to go like that, if USA is increasing the interest rates, definitely you guys are in danger. The money is going away. People are liquidating their tuition and they're taking the money away. So the only way to 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 deter the capital flight is by also increasing CBR interest rates increase so that the investors leave the money here and therefore our importers when they're importing goods the dollar is stable and they can easily import goods here and then we avoid the so much bit of imported inflation so let's not only look at the side of moderating internal or domestic demand but also the effect of capital flight which eventually will lead to if we don't term it lead to imported inflation which is the biggest thing now because we're net importers thank you Thank you. <coughs> Thank you for the questions. Uh, mine is just um, an addition to what has been actually mentioned. Right now, central banks are facing what we call the trilemma, <coughs> whereby we have to manage inflation, we have to manage the interest rates, at the same time, we have to manage the exchange rate. So our biggest evil right now is inflation, as uh, it has been mentioned from, uh, all the, uh, fr from the director. We have to manage inflation such that we get to a point where we are comfortable with the interest rates um, and also the foreign exchange. I mean, the, the, yes, the exchange, the exchange rates. Otherwise, if we are inclined to managing the three, we shall find ourselves, ourselves in a situation that is dire. We can't manage three uh, aspects at a time. We have to manage what is running away at the moment. And at the moment, what is running away is inflation. So we have to fast cap inflation to get to levels where we feel like now we can come in and you know stabilize the interest rates as well and then also the exchange rate. That is where the central banks um, are right now, are that's what the central banks are facing currently and uh, the major focus is mainly on um, inflation. 
Thank you so much, Immaculate, for supplementing uh, what Solomon has said. Okay, so we had um, some hands here. In the meantime, for those of us who haven't taken breakfast, please feel free to serve breakfast while the session continues. Uh, sir, uh, I have a question that uh, uh, there is no doubt on that, that uh, we need, uh, the CBR has to be used uh, to arrest the inflation and, uh, and according to the international market also, we need to, uh, we need to act upon that. Uh, but in the meantime, we also, uh, we have also have to see that the, our economy should be revived after this COVID-19. So any other measures uh, which, uh, which Bank of Uganda is seeking to relax some parameters for, uh, for the economy to revive also? Uh, are you seeking for the other, mo other modes of operations also? For that, that uh, is my question. Because CBR, uh, there is no doubt that there is a, again, um, uh, the US Fed is going to increase the rates. And after that, we, we, we are forced to, uh, to increase ours also. But in the meantime, the credit exposure will also get down because the rates will be higher. So that for banks to, uh, to align with the CBR, we need also to have to increase the rate. So that's my question that whether we are going to see the other measures also for the parameter recession in by BOU to at least credit to go to growth for the credit growth in the market. Um. Let me first begin by thanking the Director of Communications. Uh, Your name, please. Your name? I'm coming to that. Okay, thank you. Uh, director of Communications and the Executive Director of Operations and generally the team that has put this together. I think we welcome the, this type of engagement. Um, hopefully, they, you know, they will be more frequent as we go forward. My name is Alan Muhinda. I represent Stanbic Bank. I have uh, maybe one or two questions as well as uh, comments. I think the first one is, and I've had many of my colleagues talk about um, you know, the sustainability of uh, CBR increments, and that has been ex uh, ably explained. We are at the time of the year when we begin to plan for sessions ahead. And I see that from the monetary policy statement and the reports that usually come after that, uh, you do usually provide, um, I think you call it a fan chart of how inflation is likely to pan out. And I think even within the statement you've mentioned possibly peaking um, in uh, Q, Q1, sorry, half one of, uh, of 2023. My question is twofold. The first one would be, based on that model, um, where possibly do you see CBR peaking? That's number one. Number two, how long, uh, you know, because you've said that you expect inflation to sort of fall back into the uh, target in the medium term. How long do you see CBR staying at the level that it will pick at, or generally where do you see average CBR levels maybe over the next 12 months? Uh, it's not something that you may have been asked before, but since you've opened up this dialogue, I think it's important um, that we start to look at what is that path of CBR? Because I, I believe that it's also an important mechanism of sort of anchoring expectations in one way or another. Um, so that's one on CBR. The next one is on, uh, and I think my colleague from uh, Stanchat, uh, Oscar, touched on this. Um, looking at our reserve levels, uh, they are below the historical average, and you can call that a five-year average. I think at about 3.8 billion or thereabouts, slightly lower than the four mark that we've maintained, call it over the last five years or so. Um, we also know that generally dollar strength steam, seems to still be prevailing. Uh, globally, maybe if it has 
dollar has strengthened by about 14%. If you look at the dollar index, Uganda shilling against dollar, maybe shilling has depreciated by about 8%. So, you know, there is a question of do we see further Uganda shilling uh, dollar um, adjustment? None of us can answer that question. But I think in trying to look at the possibilities is to say that, okay, if our reserves sit at about 3.8 billion or thereabouts, and granted we have not seen Bank of Uganda intervene as actively as they have you know, during the recent uh, weakening episode, do we see uh, that there is room to deploy um, more of the CRR or potentially even CBR more aggressively uh, if, for example, we were to resume you know, a, another round of uh, strong weakness of the currency? Those would be my two questions. And then uh, let me add a third. So today, if you look at um, you know, the interbank, and I think uh, Okwenja is one who asked this, if you look at the interbank, we are more or less funding at 10, 11%, right? And I know that the CBR, of course, has a band. But I think within that is to say that if the market has already priced in at 10 or 11, and that's where the activity is taking place, is there a risk um, that you know CBR is a bit behind the curve? And the way to look at that is perhaps a proposal, something to think about. Um, how do we, going forward, how do we gauge, for example, where the market expectations sit versus where maybe CBR eventually is or goes to? Um, such that that gap is really narrowed and, you know, the signal is made stronger from CBR. Thank you, Alan. Um, yeah, I think that will be, that will be my, my, my Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, now, just to pick one from our online audience, um, the question comes in from uh, Samuel Kato, who is following us from um, watching from YouTube. And the question is, don't you think by continuing to increase the CBR, uh, you are competing with commercial banks instead? Sadly, you may push them out of business. Let me hand over the microphone to Solomon to answer the question that have come in so far. Thank, thank you very much. Um, the dollar strength and where we see CBR. <clears throat> I think by and large, that is going to depend on the di how the dynamics in the macroeconomic environment change. It's going to be the driving factor of the next course of action. So we need to await and see the recent reaction of the increase in CBR and how it's going to feed through and its effect. Again, this is also going to depend on the global effects, which how they evolve and change to determine how the next course of action on the CBR. You, I can't certainly say that at this point in time, CBR will be picking or what, because it all depends on the dynamics and how they are going to change. In the macroeconomic environment, and the global effect. I recall in 2008 when we had a crisis, much as the developed countries were going through very difficult challenges, the emerging markets were the result for investment. So we are yet to see how this plays up and with the recession heating up, and our CBR high, attracting more inflows coming in, more portfolio flows, 
we, we are yet to see how that turns out in the economy. On the issue of I think I've answered where you see CBR peaking. And there's one question which, is that all? Alan, have I answered? Other tools, given the potential exchange rate pressures, yeah, so I was saying that, um, you know, given where our reserves sit, right, yes. um, I think it's fair to say that potentially there, is, there would be some limited room to sell more dollars into the market. I'm just assuming. You can correct me. So I'm saying if we were to adjust further, because we've maybe depreciated by 8%, whereas dollar has generally gained by about 14%, if we were to adjust further for any unforeseen circumstances, do you see the central bank employing more of the CRR or potentially even increasing you know, CBR, CBR much more aggressively to sort of address uh, uh, that, that uh, volatility issue? But now that I have the mic, uh, let me add one thing. <laughs> um, just as I commended uh, Bank of Uganda for opening up this dialogue, I think a natural progression of this would also to start to see, like you know, other major central banks do, would, would be to start to see where generally the minds for the people that sit in, 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 in MPC are in terms of how they view, for example, inflation, how they view... Um, you know, the monetary path that it should take. In a very simple way, that is to say that can we at some point expect that we can begin to see some MPC minutes or something of the sort? Because these are some of the things that really build up the credibility of uh, policy actions. Yeah, thank you, Alan. I'll start with the second one. I think we'll take that. And I will, since we have director communication here, he, he will take note of that. And on the CRR, I, I, just as I said, it's very difficult to determine right now. It will all depend on the changing dynamics. Economies are prone to changes at any one time. So depending on the situation, will guide the decision making on the, on the way forward. Any more questions? Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Francis uh, from uh, NCBA, Bank Uganda. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Kama, for your presentation. I think it was a good one. I believe it was a good one, not think. Uh, but mine is on back to CRR with the heightening of uh, uh, the ratio to 10%. Uh, I believe... Uh, what I, maybe to understand more further is that uh, why don't we consider also to include uh, the foreign currency deposits in the computation, basically where we are. We acknowledge that it's a tough, tough times. Everybody is fighting for themselves across, across the globe, uh, notwithstanding ourselves and the central banks trying to put whatever is in play to heighten or to cut in uh, the inflation levels. So for starters, why, 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 why don't we consider uh, the foreign currency deposits for that? Because I remember even prior or during the the lockdown period, there's also a suggestion or a discussion revolving around cutting it back from the 8 to 5 percent levels. So it also it warrants why you are now or where we are now, but I mean also to consider the fact uh, for the foreign currency deposits. Uh, thank you. Uh, mine, mine is a bit of, of kind of a reaction on the side of uh, Alan's uh, suggestion on if Bank of Uganda would consider uh, increasing a CRR as one of the methods to, to my, I think increasing CRR and um, CBR at the same time could be more punitive, especially we're looking at lending because more liquid will be locked in uh, and already as a colleague 
from uh, NCB has, just, has stated that um, already uh, because of the FCY not being considered for CRR, the UGX is already locked up. So increasing CRR from the current 10% as a method to curtail uh, the volatilities would just worsen the bank's lending position, the fact that we need the liquidity, to, uh, we need to learn to, to revamp our economy. So I, uh, I don't know what the central bank position is in, but that would be my view. Um, probably uh, one thing we need to commend the central bank is the, the SLF. Um, I'm thinking probably uh, because of the, the rapid rise in the cost of uh, liquidity, and I think um, the market can appreciate that uh, fund managers and insurance companies are quite offering very competitive rates when it comes to liquidity as well. And this has also brought a constraint to commercial banks when it comes to um, the sourcing cheaper liquidity for lending. So uh, I, I, uh, my, my suggestion would be if central bank could uh, bring in more, uh, maybe fast run quickly to see that the repo and um, more of the instruments come in play uh, to enable uh, banks have a way to have quick liquidity to manage uh, the CRR. Uh, if, because we, we have been discussing about the aspect of uh, vertical repos and uh, the swaps and it's really taken so long. Probably that could help immunize the short-term liquid as opposed to moving uh, the CRR as a method to manage uh, the volatilities. Yes, good morning. Uh, my name is Ali Twaha and I uh, work with New Vision. Uh, we would like to thank uh, the Central Bank for the efforts in uh, trying to tamp down inflation expectations, but I would want to re-echo uh, what has been said in terms of the heavy knee that we see uh, in your direction on the CRR. I think if there's demand is already constrained and you're pushing the banks harder, there won't be any easy on, on, on the borrowers. Uh, so I, I just wanted to re-echo that, but you've already given your, your position on that. The second is uh, yesterday the DG talked of uh, the economy is recovering but I wanted uh, to get an update in terms of the CRM program, in terms of the recovery processes for, for, for those loans. As at end of April, I think uh, these had reduced to about uh, 2.5 T, which is about 14% uh, of the total gross loans. Any update as of uh, end of September? I don't know if there's anyone who can answer any questions regarding uh, 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 the NPS players. I think we have about 19%, right? rather 19 firms that were, uh, have been licensed. I wanted to know they are worth in terms of, you know, they're supposed to also publish their, 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 their financials. What are the, uh, is the total you know, assets under management in there currently from your position. Thank you. Uh, good morning. My name is Julius from Exim Bank. Uh, mine is the simple one. What measures are you taking to narrow the gap between where banks are funding and uh, the CBR? Thank you, Julius. I think we can first respond to those. Um, Solomon, before you come in, Pumala wanted to throw more light regarding uh, um, the monetary policy minutes, I think. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Alan, is it? Yes, Alan. Alan um, made um, a great recommendation about us um, looking to other central banks and the way they do things. And in our... Um, we are committed to excellence as a, central, as a Bank of Uganda. And one of the things, it is, it's uh, more to do with our legal framework. So currently, um, amend amendments of the Bank of Uganda Act are underway. 
and this has two main components, the first being aligning the Bank of Uganda Act with the Uganda Constitution and the umbrella and under which we execute our mandate, number one. And then number two is also as a, mo as a progressive and dynamic central bank, there are certain elements of central banking that are not incorporated in our Bank of Uganda Act. And one of them is issues to do with the Monetary Policy Committee. So one of the things that is being, of the amendments being done in the Bank of Uganda Act actually is both um, a reorganization and publication of the Monetary Policy Committee structure and organizational co body. And when that is done, then we, from then we, will be able, we will be mandated, yes, and we'll be able, we are now legally allowed to publish, maybe not the minutes for the first phase, but deliberations of the Monetary Policy Committee, so that the public is able to get more in-depth information that led to the decision of the monetary policy, that you, that the decisions that you see in the monetary policy statements. So that is underway, and we've given ourselves a period of about a year. It's a bit complex, because there's a lot of back and forth between the central bank and, gov and uh, parliament, but that is underway. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Immaculate, and then finally Solomon can respond. Um, still, uh, com, uh, what to, to respond to, I think, um, Stanbeck's queries on um, uh, whether we are going to continue increasing the CRR uh, from where we are. Uh, Ban Bank of Uganda is also mindful of the business environment, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the expectation is not to have punitive measures that are going to push banks out of business. That's why we, um, at the same time, uh, being mindful of inflation, we put measures for banks to be able to access liquidity at any one point. And at least um, we have taken steps on that front. So the Bank of Uganda is also mindful in that aspect. Uh, we do not expect to have situations where we are going to make the banks fall out of business. So we are mindful. And uh, much as we have taken uh, certain steps to curb inflation, we are also mindful of the business environment. Um, I, I think I, I just wanted to respond to that and also assure the banks that uh, we are also cautious, much as we have difficult times. Uh, it's not only in Uganda, but uh, by the way, also in Bri <laughs> the Great Britain. <laughs> yeah, so we have seen that even the Central Bank of England had, um, had promised to continue buying uh, securities, the long-term securities, uh, to a tune of, I think, uh, 22 billion, um, yes, e every month. But uh, I think as a, as a th last month, they only bought about uh, 22 million. So that is an indicator that much as uh, there are all these things that central banks are looking at, um, you can find that what they had initially envisioned might not be undertaken. Uh, given the prevailing circumstances, but also we are we are cautious of the uh, business environment. We want to keep the, the commercial banks here. You're the biggest part of the financial system, uh, so we are very very cautious of the environment. Thank you, yes, thank you very much, Immaculate, for that. Um, I'll start with the issue raised by New Vision. We don't have the numbers here. But you should have asked the numbers to be given to you yesterday. Why didn't you ask those numbers? <laughs> but we don't have them here, but we can always arrange and have them. And you also say that demand is constrained. Usually in an inflationary environment, that's the target. You want to impact on demand so that you, know, you draw down, you, you, you reduce and fight inflation in that environment. And Somebody else raised an issue of what measures have we taken to narrow the gap between what you commercial banks are doing and the CBR. I think now it's your responsibility also to look at that. You need also to look at that when you're lending. You know, we've established the guarantee facility, which is going to stand in between to reduce the credit risk. That intuitively means that you are going to get money cheaper than how you used to get it. So it's your action now.
to also start looking at that and reducing the spread of that. On the, the CRR and applying it on the F on the foreign exchange, we had somebody from supervision here. Is he around? Do you have in response to that? Yes, uh, thank you very much. I have Yonah Pisiga here from Bank Supervision. Um, indeed, that has been uh, a proposal on the table for a while now, but uh, it is a considered view at uh, Bank of Uganda that that would not uh, support um, monetary uh, policy actions because if we are now converting uh, the, the foreign denominated currency into, um, into local currency, and yet you remember CRR is what is supposed to curb liquidity from a, a local currency point of view. And you know all this transmits, um, is interrelated with the monetary policy. And when we are doing monetary policy, it's basically in the, in the, in the, in the currency of, uh, of, of our nation. So it would be, it, 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 it appears to be a good proposal, but it is not workable um, on the basis of that. Yeah, that's why um, it, it has not, never taken off. Thank you. The other credit was from Echo Bank. Thank you for the credit on the SLF. I think the bank is committed to providing liquidity through that anytime you market players want liquidity. Okay, uh, we seem to have answered all the questions that have been asked this morning. One of the things that the Deputy Governor said yesterday was that despite of all what is happening, the economy is rebounding. For me, that sounds like good news, so we have a reason to hope for the better. Okay, um, so having answered all questions, maybe, uh, one, first of all, I want to thank you, Solomon, for ably answering all the questions as asked. Thank you so much, Buana Kwesiga, for uh, supplementing Immaculate, and um, Jonah, Acting Director of Communications. Um, anything maybe before we officially close? Um, I think uh, a lot has been said, uh, and I would like to thank the participants because this is the kind of engagement that we had uh, anticipated. And I would also like to encourage, there's a lot of information that has been requested for and I would like to highlight to the participants that most of this information, especially data pertaining monetary policy and the CRM, like Ali Twaha requested for, you can always get this on our website, uh, which is uh, in the, at the back of these folders. But you can also drop us an email in case you need more of this data. You can uh, drop us an email at info at bou.or.ug. So that is not to say that our engagement ends here. Let us continue to engage and keep on. Uh, uh, we shall receive your requests and we shall return uh, with the information that is required. Uh, thank you all. Thank you so much, Andrew. Andrew talked about effective communication when he was uh, delivering his remarks. And I see him walking the talk already. <laughs> Thank you, Andrew. Kwesig, anything else that you want to, just the last one? Yes, um, just further to um, Director Communications um, remarks, I wanted to indicate uh, to our colleague from New Vision that uh, the, the financial stability report for June 2022 is on the website of the Bank of Uganda. And uh, the numbers there reflect that as of June 2020, the current exposure under the CRM had uh, reduced 2.2 trillion from uh, a peak of 5.2 trillion in uh, September um, 2020. So further details are already available on the website. Thank you. Thank you once again, Kwesiga. Uh, so ladies and gentlemen, we've almost come to the end of uh, the session of the Monetary Policy Forum. But before we go, three things. One, that information pack that you have on the table 
has an evaluation form. Kindly fill it in and give us feedback so that we can serve you better going forward. And then two, that same folder has got a registration form. Please fill in that registration form and then the team will pass by and pick it. I, see, I already see Rita actually collecting the forms. So kindly those to do for me do the favor to fill in those two forms, the evaluation form and then the registration form. And then three, we still have breakfast. So for those of us who couldn't get out to serve breakfast because you are concentrating on the Monterey Policy Forum, uh, you have um, uh, a chance to still go and pick your breakfast. But also lastly, uh, you notice that um, we, we are online, we are on Twitter, we are on uh, YouTube, we are on uh, um, uh, um, many other uh, social media forums. Please keep the feedback flowing. The team will respond to you even after this forum. Thank you so much once again. Robert Wagonza is my name. Thank you. God bless you. Departure is at leisure. Thank you for the round of applause.